Hello everyone, Lord Hamster here. It's been a while since I've done a video, and that is due to, um, basically my computer not being able to record video games anymore. I can still play them, can't record them, can't handle it. So instead, I'm trying something a little bit new. This is going to be a fan narration of all my favorite webcomics that I read, Earthworld. Um, as of this recording, I do not have written permission from the from Rob Balder and the other people that work at Overworld to do this, so this may not even go public. If it does, um, there's going to be a link to the website in the description as well as copyright information. Please, please, please support the webcomic. The entire point of me doing this is I want to support them without any money to actually get to support them. And <clears throat> if you like this, subscribe, like, comment, please go to the website and read it there. I'm not going to be uploading any images from the actual site. I will only be reading you um, the text updates and a, and a lengthened version of the picture updates where I add text in order to describe what's going on. But this being a webcomic, the majority of it is in such picture updates and it's even better individual style so please 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 if you enjoy this go to the website and read it there this is mostly intended for people that wish to listen to Earthworld without having to stop and read it while they work on something else okay and now I'm gonna get started life is all numbers ask any math and answer they know to live is to stand on one side of an equation which must equal zero in the end. There is a price, a cost of numbers to be paid for staying alive. Zero is a balance, an equilibrium. Zero is a flat country, neither far away nor near. You can travel there any time, at the cost of your life. And perhaps, if someone were to pay the price to the exact number, you could even return again. That mathematicians often say such things and nod to one another soberly is thought to be why they tend to keep to their own company. No one knows what to say to them. Each discipline of magic has its own special insight into cosmic truths. Few casters doubted what was said of the number axis, but even fewer understood. Not consciously, anyway. One day in the country of zero, someone paid a price. Somewhere in the great infinite sheet of balance, a peak rose up. Peaceful zeros became ones, fives, forty-eights. Agitated, 112. Angry, 62. 63, 79s. The thousands piled up, far above the plane of equilibrium. The numbers rose as a column, into the millions and billions and more. A silver thread stretching way up and away from the peace below. This thread is being drawn up by the system of the world. Think of answers new as the grandiocosmic string. Its numbers are being shaped and guided by the firmament. firmament by what magic theorists call the Earth Axis. For when the price was paid, it was Earthful, which processed the transaction. The world produced the unit that was called for, more or less. There was the matter of the Fate Axis as well, and this unit was turning out to be very special. This unit would be worth far more than the buyer paid for. That was no violation of numbers, though. It simply meant that this unit carried a balance due, and though it would be an astronomically high figure, someone would pay. Zero always called, and someone would have to pay. Units belonging to a side always pop in cities. Within those cities, units seem to pop where they are needed. Archers to the outer walls, heavies to the stables and courtyards, etc. This particular unit was popped in the war room of Minnow Tower, in the capital city of Goodminton. Her mind was overcome by first sensations. She suddenly wore matte black leather boots with buckles. She just as suddenly had feet within them. Those feet took her weight. She needed to inhale and did her first living breath. A little damp and chilly, she thought. She blinked her first blink and continued breathing through her nostrils. She smelled damp timbers and brick dust, parchment and ink, hardwood smoke. She touched the cloth of her robe with these fingers on this hand that was hers. The garment was soft. Thick, woolen, heavy, also ugly, slate blue with brass buttons, good mittens li livery. Her side was a winter dominion, 
She knew these things. She recognized without remembering. This unit began to unfasten the buttons. She wanted to take off the robe and look at her body. Touch it. She felt she must be beautiful, that her signomancy would teach her much about herself. Then she heard her first distinct sound, the clearing of a human throat. Her chief warlord had been saying it in her field of view the entire time. Not every shape in the room had meaning yet. The room was large and contained many things. But yes, there he was, beside the cluttered table? Map table. He was wearing a wool cloak in the same shade of blue, lined with star fox fur. His face was hairy, but friendly. A white smile nested in a patch of coal black beard. I was expecting a brother, he said. His voice had the husky weight of a hunter's horn. She refastened one of the three buttons she had done and tilted her head, meeting his blue eyes. She would try speaking words now. I've never expected a thing, she said, wondering at the sound coming from her mouth. You're a caster, said the chief, losing the reins of his smile as it broadened into a wide grin. He stepped closer to her, hands upon hips, elbows tinting his cloak. He is built like a siege tower. My sister, the caster. How bizarre. I mean, I should be furious. I bet father will be. What's your name? What kind of caster are you? I am Wanda, she said definitively, although she didn't really know her own name until she stated it aloud. Lady Wanda Fireball. I am a crocomancer. This too, she knew only as she said it, but it felt abidingly true. She could animate the husks of the once living. Yes, she could. The chief's smile dimmed like a lantern and died. Oh, that'll be interesting, he said thoughtfully. He licked his lips, looking away at the map table. Crocomancer. Father will be interested in that, I can tell you. Titans. He seemed to ponder the implications against the busy strategic situ situation represented on the table. Wanda followed his gaze there. It looked messy. It was a meticulous sort of mess. At least five colors of unit markers were in play. No six. Slate blue was among the most meager in number. Arrangements, the arrangement of hexes and pieces was actually a neat representation of a mess in reality. Well, he said, suddenly clapping his hands. Welcome home to Goodminton, Wanda. I'm Tommy Fireball. Short for Atomic. Father is simply Overlord Fireball, of course. He looked as if he couldn't decide whether or not to embrace her. His hands stayed on his hips. That's the whole family anymore, I'm afraid. His face started. We'll need to get you in front of Father right away. But I wonder if it couldn't wait until you've met the other casters. I'm surprised you popped here, not with Lady Temple, actually. Wonder had been glancing around the room, identifying objects as he spoke. When Tommy fell silent, she returned her gaze to him apologetically. Yes, Chief Warlord as well as brother. Respect and attention do. He heaved a great breath and smiled once more. Anyway, that's the good news, though. We have two casters besides you, and a number of good warlords. Although we were sort of hoping you'd be more of an axe-wielding berserker type, you know. We could use it about now. We to head to the battle map. As you can see, just the two cities left. Still have allies, but they're sort of looking at us like the last slice of cake, you know? Wanda wasn't sure she fully understood the implications of the map, but her brother's chipper tone kept falling off to awkward silence. It had dawned on her that the grace and the burden of being a living person might not be hers for very long. Zero was always was already calling back was already calling her back. Sorry, I'm gonna stumble like this from time to time as my brain tries to skip ahead. I'm a fast reader, mine. Crocomancer, said Tommy again, licking her up and down. He shook his head as he turned for the grand doors. 